Welcome back to Torx Garage. I'm Mike. Uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and cover this Hemi engine rebuild more in depth this time. I hinted at it a little bit last time, uh, but we're actually going to go ahead and start from the beginning. Um, this is stuff I've filmed in the past, so it's not going to look like it did either last time or this time today. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start right from when I got it back from the machine shop. So completely bare block. And we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to install crank, pistons, um, all that fun stuff. Get the timing set up. Um, and then go ahead and... I didn't film putting the timing cover and some of that stuff on. I just didn't feel like it. I, I wasn't feeling the best. So I just decided to put some headphones in and just get going and just work. Put my head down and work. Um, it's not too hard to figure out. You know, it's bolts and that kind of stuff, but I will show you that installed. Um, other than that, we're really getting close to getting this back into the vehicle. And honestly, that's great because I'm I'm tired of this being down. I needed to get going. Um, I've got other projects I need to get done. So finally, I get the chance to rebuild this Hemi engine. Uh, now, I stripped it down a few weeks ago, actually a couple months ago now. So I didn't have a chance to record it at the time, and I should have. Anyway, I just got it back from the machine shop today, so one of the first things I need to know after I've got this taken apart is will my cam fit? Now, I should have no issues with fitment on this. Now, it only used standard bearings that they installed, and this is supposed to use standard bearings. But, I still have to check, because if there's an issue, I don't want to get the whole rotating assembly installed then find out I have to take it back to the machine shop to have them undo it all and put the right bearings in, whatever they need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and install this now. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to lube all of the bearing surfaces. That way we're not going to scratch any of the surfaces or anything and it gets proper lubrication. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to go ahead and get it installed next. Now on that note there are a few various um, engine assembly loops that you can use and this one and I will post a link to it in the video if you're interested uh, this is Lubra plate you can get it at uh, pretty much any part store I got it from O'Reilly's for this one I like this it's basically white lithium grease I think um, but it is useful it's not quite as sticky as maybe some of the red stuff that you can get but I like this so I'm going to use this That's great. There's a hole in this now. Can't use too much lube. Now, it's not like I'm, I can mess it up, really. Uh, but these bearings actually are tapered smallest end at the back and they get bigger and bigger and bigger so we're just gonna carefully slide this right through make sure we're gonna fit properly Okay, there we go. Now I can kind of cheat on this one because the rear cam plug is still not installed. I can get in there and wiggle it around. Trying to do this on vehicle might be a little more interesting.
It's a little tight, but it fits. I'm gonna have to grab the old cam gear, see if it rotates, just to make sure. Cam gear here has a little keyway, a little stud here. It's gonna fit right over this, just like the stock one did. It's easy to set up. I'm just gonna slip it over for now. And I'm just gonna hold this to make sure it doesn't fall in or go too far back or whatever. Because if it falls down in front, it's gonna kinda suck to get out. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so now that I know that the cam actually rotates properly and it's not binding or anything, we know that the bearings are good, we know the camshaft is good, it's going to work in it. So, next step here is going to be to start installing the rotating assembly. So that means crankshaft next. I'm going to get that installed, get the main bearings in, and then we can start putting pistons in know that the cam works we can go ahead and start installing the rotating assembly. What that means first is getting the crankshaft in. So I had it checked everything looks good so we're just going to go ahead and reinstall the factory crankshaft as it is, clean it up a little bit and we're just going to go ahead and put standard main bearings into it. We're going to go ahead and tighten it down, torque all of the main cap bolts and just make sure we don't have any weird binding just kind of like I did with the cam as well. We just want to make sure that this block is okay. Now, by the way, another useful tool for both at-home mechanics or professional mechanics, these electric ratchets are starting to get really nice. This isn't too bulky. This is a Milwaukee M12. It's a non-fuel version. Um, they seem to be a little bit stronger than the fuel. It's so worth it. I don't need to mess around with air anymore. It takes me forever to use a regular ratchet. It's not too loud. And it has quite a bit of torque. So I'm going to go ahead and take off these main bearing caps that they just put on at the machine shop. Uh-oh. Sometimes that happens. Now, one thing you have to remember, these are numbered. Sometimes they are not, but you need to make sure you keep these caps in the right order and the right orientation. You don't want to mix them up. More than likely it won't fit, but you never know, and that can really mess it up. That'll mess you up. See on this one there's actually an arrow on it. Smart. Now when you're installing these main bearings, or any, any of the cam bearings, you don't want to put lubrication on the surface of the block itself where the bearing sits into. You only want it on the surface where the crankshaft or the camshaft is going to actually rotate. So now that we've got the main bearing caps off, it's time to install the main bearings. Now I don't, you're probably not going to be able to see it here, uh, but any bearing is going to have a groove for it to locate itself. Now the block has the same groove in here. So that makes it easy to figure out exactly where these go. So I'm going to go ahead and just start putting these in. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get the crank ready to put in. And then it's time to put the caps on. Alright, now the bearing surfaces are fairly self-explanatory. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you anyway. See what we've got going on. Now you can see these grooves right here every single side. Now both the main caps and the block have it and each bearing also has that little groove. Makes it easy to fit it, locate it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now.
Another thing to note, these bearings that go in the block, the halves of the bearings, they have a nice large oil groove in them as well, so it's easier to identify. You'll see on the upper half, or technically the bottom half, I suppose, they are just flat. So you just have to push it in, make sure it's even. Now, I will note that when you're installing bearings, wear gloves. Now, it's not just because it's going to get greasy and everything. You don't want any of the oils from your skin to get into that bearing surface because it will stay in there. So having gloves makes it a lot easier to just avoid that whole problem in the first place. You don't want it to you don't want it to wear. You want it to last quite a long time. It's time for some lube. Alright, so now it's time to install the crankshaft. Now, this engine's been apart for a couple months. So another note I want to give you guys is that when you're storing a crankshaft, you don't want to store it on its side laying down. Now, it doesn't seem like the greatest idea. Somebody could knock it over. You do have to be mindful of that. If you can find a way to keep it strapped up, that's the best. Um, but what can happen is since it's so heavy, if you lay it on its side, it can actually warp over time. And that's also not good. is quite a heavy boy here. Now that it's down in its hole, I can at least start putting the bearings in the main caps and then we can start torquing it down. Now this has a stud on here which is for the oil pickup tube. I'm going to have to go back through my pictures. It's been a while. I don't remember which cap it was on and I think they got it mixed up. So I just need to double check. Alright, so I've got the main bearing caps back on. I've got the crankshaft in. I haven't torqued them yet. I'm just going to use this to very lightly snug the main caps down. Every cap you want to do it, make sure to still do this in the procedure that it says, in the right order. I just, every cap you do, you want to make sure that you can still spin the crankshaft. Unfortunately, since this stud is also here, none of my sockets fit it for length, so I'm going to have to use a different kind of wrench on it. Alright, now, a couple other things I forgot to mention that you want to do, and I have corrected this now. Um, one is you want to make sure you put in the thrust washers, and I forgot to do that before I put the center cap back on, so I had to take that off, put those back in, and then we're okay. Um, but one of the other things is you want to make sure the threads are nice and oiled. 
Um, you don't want them going in dry because that will actually give you a uh, wrong torque reading. Um, torque specs for this Hemi from Dodge are 20 foot-pounds plus an additional 90 degrees after they're all tightened. Um, I have a great torque wrench for that. It's electronic. Um, it will do torque as well as angle, um, so that'll be useful for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Uh, we just want to make sure that these are all tightened properly, and every time I tighten the cap, I'm just going to make sure that this spins still as freely as it does now. I do also want to point out another thing here. These main caps on this Hemi engine, they also have bolts that come in from each side through the side of the block too. Uh, so those can be put on very last after these are all torqued down, but you don't want to forget them. Now here's the torque wrench I'm using here. Um, it is digital, so it will do both torque, you know, fo foot-pounds, newton-meters, but also angle as well. So that'll help me get that perfect 90 degree. Um, so now the, the correct pattern for torquing this, you want to make sure you stay to this. You don't want to tighten one side and have the other side loose because that could warp it as well. Um, on this one specifically, you start center cap, fourth cap, second cap, fifth cap, and then the first cap. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then that is our crank installed for real this time. Doesn't require much torque at all.